Goedemiddag studenten en welkom bij de eerste online sessie van NG2 221. Ik uh, heb in die tijd gehoop, ons kan elkaar weer in persoon zien, maar dit wil voor mij voorkomen als het ons nog een rukkie so uh, gaan aangaan. Ik hoop elk een van jullie is veilig en gezond. Um, daar is alsjeblieft, dit wil voor mij lijken dat jullie virus nou zijn ernstige uh, stadium in Zuid-Afrika bezig is om te bereiken. Dus so, uh, neem waarschuwings ernstig op, hou jezelf um, uh, veilig en moet ons alsjeblieft nie um, jouself aan risiko uh, blootstel nie. Goed, um, met betreffende die studiebrief, uh, ek is jammer as gevolg van my feit was daar uh, meer as een keer die week um, datums wat nie recht was nie, soos wat jy om hier sien verskyn jy ook op die studiegids en hierdie datums is ook nou correct. Let alsjeblieft daar op dat jouw semester toets, wat ek aanvankelijk gesê, dit is die nawekse datum van die 15e augustus, is nou die 12e augustus nie, nou nie, het was nog altijd so, uh, dit is die datum soos wat ek het van die akademische hoof heb ook gekry het, ek het eenvoudig na die week gekyk en nie na die datum self nie. So dit, uh, jou semester toets is die 12e augustus. By the end of this lesson, you will be, um, you, uh, assessment activity 1 will be due by you uh, to me uh, by week 3, that's the 25th of July. I will also explain it um, before we end this lesson today. Die rest van die activiteite gaan ek wel bespreek soos wat ons um, aangaan. Ok, then again, there is, uh, you've got me as your lecturer, there are my details. Mrs. Bischoff remains your tutor. Uh, and please note that her um, email address, uh, or the, that, um, the module's email address changes to 221, not 211 as it shows there. And how is it if it's something dringent is, if you have a quick answer for it, then you push it for me. If it's something dringent is, and you can a day or two wait, then you push it to the 221 at aros.ac.za. You push, and Mr. Bischoff will give you the time to answer. Okay, I'd like us to have a look at um, the outcomes for today's lesson. Wat moet jy weet uh, ten die einde van vandags les, wat jy moet kan doen? Uh, I want you firstly to understand the variety of meanings the word text carries. I want you to be able to differentiate between various texts, or to start to differentiate, to be able to identify text features and structure, to start, dit, dit gaan nog verder vir julle verduidelik word soos wat die module aangaan. And then lastly, to clearly define the various text used uh, in the intermediate phase. Julle assessment activity 1 gaan ook daarna kyk. Ok, um, if we move on, what specifically are we going to do today? We are going to explore what the word or the term text means. Ons gaan daarna kyk, ons gaan kyk dat dit nie net so eenvoudig is soos wat ons denk het is nie. We are going to discuss, discuss what different texts look like, uh, compare their features and the importance of their structure, and then lastly, uh, what these various texts entail for you as a teacher in the uh, intermediate phase. Okay, the first question on our, on our plate today is what is text? Ek het julle gevra om voor die tijd uh, a video op eerklas klas te gaan kyk waar die persoon um, basis opgesom het dat mens uh, op verschillende manieren naar tekst kan kyk dat tekst nie net eenvoudig geskrewe letters is nie daar is wel een um, tekortkoming daar aan aan die video wat ek nou uh, for you sal verduidelik. Would we consider the following to be text? I want you to think about this and I want to think about why you would say that in the light of the video and your personal experience as well. We, to start off from a language um, a perspective, we know that language connects people, we wouldn't be teaching it if that wasn't the case. Um, a normal person can process up to 15,000 words per day and children can start putting words together from um, a one year old. Uh, dis natuurlijk iets wat ek gesê het, uh, ek graag wil sien hoe dit ontwikkel in my dochtertie, wel sy is nou hierso, uh, maar sy kan nou echter nog nie uh, praat nie, maar uh, uh, in, in goeie tyd sal dit ook gebeur. Ok, would you consider one of the following uh, texts? We've got on the right there the opening lines uh, of A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickinson, or uh, not Charles Dickinson, Charles Dickens, on the right, you've got uh, a specific type of cartoon which looks uh, in the style of the mid 1950s to 60s. And on the bottom left there, you've got uh, what looks like the symbol. And keep in mind the word symbol 
for Bitcoin, if I'm not mistaken. So would these be considered texts? The following, magazine, Time magazine, would that be considered text? There's another cartoon there, more uh, a type of a, a newspaper uh, cartoon, which ironically uh, questions what text has become over the year, the years, how messages are transferred, how people uh, communicate. Then if we move on, uh, if it'll just move on, uh, you can go and click there. This is a, 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 um, a music video from YouTube. I'm not going to play the music video for you now, for you now. but it's an Afrikaans, but the belangrijke vraag wat jy self die vraag ook is, is, kan hierdie ook beskou word aan tekst? En dan gaan kyk specifiek na die elemente, wat hierdie muziek video saamstel in die eerste plek, en in die tweede plek, hoe jy betekenis daaruit maak, dier dit wat jy sien. Um, then we can also ask, can the following be text? If this will just move on. Um, can your classroom be text? That, that is a big question. Can ons ons klas as text te beskou? En ek gaan nie dadelijk hierdie vraag beantwoord nie, maar ek wil toch dink, uh, hee julle my dink daaran, vooral die vorige module het ons al wel bykie daarvan gesê, hoe lyk ons klasse dees daar? What is, die, what is the make-up of our classes? Do we have homogenous learners? Learners coming from one place, one uh, economic um, uh, um, ca uh, category, or, or what does our learners look like? Do they speak one language? Um, obviously not all of them are boys, not all of them are girls. That's another thing that we must keep in mind. So can we consider our class to be a text as well? Okay, let's move on. Let's get uh, to a little bit of more of um, how we look at text, how we consider text. And the first way we look is uh, at this is by saying text is hermeneutics. Now you might ask yourself, what strange word is this uh, I'm talking about? Hermeneutics uh, is Greek in origin, and it means the following. Okay, to make the inexplicable and incomprehensible explainable and comprehensible. How does that happen? Nou, een van die makkelijker manier om dit te onthou, maar ons gaan nou in die detail, in die theoretische detail wel achter hoe dit specifiek uh, um, inspeel op dit wat ons bezig is om naar te kyk, is om te sê, goed, ek het een bepaalde tekst, kom ons maar een tekst geboek, dit is heel te mooi recht, voordat ek die boek um, gelees het, weet ek niks van die boek af nie, ok, maar, ek is daarom ook nie onder een kalkoen uitgebroe nie, ek het bepaalde ervaring, ek het, um, ons kan ook sê, ek het geswat, ek weet om te lees en te skryf, ek uh, sien goed is om my, so ek bring hierdie, hierdie bundel kennis na my lees van hierdie boek, dan lees ek hierdie boek, en ek probeer associaties maak met hierdie boek, hierdie tekst, uh, wat ek sien, en ek probeer iets van dit wat ek gelees het, by my eie kennis uh, voeg, en as ek nou rarig voorbarig is, dan gaan skryf ek ook neer wat ek geleer het da, uh, 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 um, daarna, so, Ek het met een stelkennis begin, die tekst het vir my nog een stelkennis um, gebied, ek het my stelkennis en die, en die tekste kennis en my interpretatie van die tekst, het ek by mekaar gevoeg om een nieuwe stelkennis um, te vorm. Dit is basis hoe hermeneutiek uh, werk. This is how hermeneutics works. The purpose of hermeneutics, uh, if we, if we uh, phrase this formally, is to express a message which relate to the performative aspects of language. Ok, dit is nie net op taal nie, maar in ieder geval moet ons sê taal. Hermeneutiek word baie sterk gebruik in die theologie ook, om tekste uit te lees, uh, om betekenis van tekste uh, te maak. As jy rarig um, belangstaan in byvoorbeeld die, die um, filosofie, gaan Google bykie iemand soos Hans George Gardamer. Hy word eers van die, as een van die vaders van hermeneutiek beskou. But anyway, let's get back to uh, hermeneutics and how it applies to language and to text specifically. It may also mean that it is to translate, but it is not translating as from Engels naar Afrikaans toe, um, that is not what we mean, that, that vertaal um, betekenis. Ok. Uh, een manier wat dit gaan doen kan word, from one culture to another. Typically a South African situation that we are faced with, where you have different cultures in the class. Ok, let's move on. It implies defining, okay, specifically defines the unknown to an audience by using the audience's own background, okay, and associating the unknown uh, in language and in culture. 
Ok, so dit is die belangrike ding. As ek nie self een achtergrond, as die, die persoon wat na die tekst toe kom, nie self een bepaalde achtergrond, of een achtergrond het nie, gaan hy of sy sikkel om die tekst enigszins te interpreteer, never mind om te verstaan. Dit is baie belangrik. Ok, so that's the essence of hermeneutics. It's the process, ok, where meaning uh, is made and knowledge is built out. Specifically here, we focus then on language. Ok, there is a visual il illustration of the hermeneutic cycle. We see there, there's um, the, the bewegings your kringloop, and elke keer as hy draai, dan sal weer een rondte interpretatie uh, wat gebeur, en dan, as jy nou van links na rechts beweeg, sal die rechterkant, die linkerkantse interpretatie gebruik, om sy eie, of die eie interpretatie te vorm, en so gaan mens aan en aan en aan. Uh, the hermeneutic circle, we can also illustrate it with the following diagram, um, where you start with pre-understanding, dit is soos wat nou nou vir julle verduidelik het, daar is nog geen, uh, jy kan nog steeds geen oordeel oor die tekst verg nie, want jy weet nog nie wat die, uh, die inhoud daarvan is nie, hierdie, die tekst, life, culture and politics, is goed wat jou beinvloed, wat jy saambring om jou lees van die tekst, uh, and then through this you form an interpretation, and you bring new insights and new data to light, it gets appropriated by the text, and the text is transformed until the next person comes with the prefiguration and starts again. And so we ons die tekst uit. Mens kry hem in die tek ook in die rechtswees baie, uh, vooral met wat uitspraak en goed betref, want een rechter um, het, uh, sê nou maar, een waterskynde uitspraak oor saak gemaakt, wat nog nooit van tevore in die recht uh, behandel is nie, en dan gaan kyk die volgende rechter weer aan en sê, oké okay, goed, ek stem so my, my saam, hier is die voorbeeld van my gestel het, maar hier is die specifieke omstandighede, die specifieke uh, context waar rondom dit gebeur. Speaking of context, the important flaw in the video that you watched, where they said all objects are texts, that is only half true. The French philosopher Jacques Derrida said that every text has a context. En dit is die belangrike ding daarachter. Jy kan geen tekst interpreteer of van sin maak buiten context nie. Ok, dit is baie keer wat bijvoorbeeld die probleem is met um, uh, theologische of, of nie theologische interpretaties van die bybel nie. Daar is nie een bepaalde context daarachter. Um, wat mense baie keer doen is, hulle sien, ah, oh, hier is een lekker bybelversie wat pas by my huidige omstandighede en ek haal hom aan om my huidige omstandighede te verklaar. Dit werk ongelukkig so nie, nie so nie, want die Bijbel is een ontvouwende evangelie, wat van Genesis af recht hier een uh, gouden draad het tot by um, openbaring. Oké, okay, but uh, kom ons gaan aan met ons hermeneutiek en specifiek die verstandhouding en verstaan daarachter. Oké, okay, let's therefore make the following uh, conclusions on a text by using uh, the, third, uh, the first and, and third sub-explanations of hermeneutics. We can firstly say, Text has personal and social meaning. Ok, jy gaan baie vreemd voel met die tekst wat jy nie meer kan associeer nie. Uh, wel, kom ons dit so, as jy uh, tekst wat jy nie meer kan associeer of nie ken nie moet interpreteer, gaan dit jou rukkie vat, want jy gaan eers een bepaalde uh, betekenis context rondom dit moet skep. Secondly, it has the ability to convince and even manipulate in subtle and indirect ways. Uh, you can start thinking, for example, as advertising as a, as a kind of text. And then lastly, in short, it is a communicative unit. As jy dit in hierdie tyd uh, nog nie besef het nie, dat tekst oor communicatie gaan, welkom by die, by die partijtje. Dit is die belangrike ding wat daarachter um, moet gebeur. Want onthou, die basisse communicatie proces van sender en ontvanger en uh, al baie goed is te sien, is gebeur elke keer nie so. As jy nie een context is nie, as daar nie een sender is nie, as daar nie ontvanger is nie, gaan hierdie nie werk nie. Dit is een communicatie eenheid. Ok. Um, and then, I think probably the most important thing behind this, uh, it is the result of a combination of factors that are employed to make meaning. So, uh, want eigenlijk het genoem dat ek uh, na een boek kom, ek gebruik my eie achtergrond, my eie faktore, ek Ek, ek interpreteer die boek, ek lees die boek, binnen die context waarin hy vir my gegeven word, binnen die context van dit wat hy sê, en dan van daaraf gaan ek verder, en ek, 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 ek verrijk my eie achtergrond met dit wat ek in die boek gelees het, en uh, ek gaan um, verder. Ok, text, namely therefore, is language usage of a communicative unit that is experienced and accepted by the participants 
and it takes based on the terms of syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Okay, now who verduidelik dit wat ons nou so pas gesê het ook is? Eerstens, communicatieve eenheid. Daar is communicatie wat gebeur. Okay, hierdie communicatie gebeur by die context, daai context word gevorm door ervaring, experience, and acceptance by the participants. Onthou, taal word neergeleid, die reels van taal, the syntax, the semantics, and the pragmatics, are laid down within a perceived context, not just a communication context, okay? If we look at English, for example, being influenced by so, ma so much social cultural history, the influence of French, the influence of other Germanic languages, um, that is very important. Da, dit, is, dit is deel van die context daarachter. Hoe kom Engels um, 44 voorneme bijvoorbeeld het? Dit is alles deel van die context. So dit pas alles by die eerste definitie wat jy daar kan sien. Secondly, we can also add uh, to, to the fact that it takes place within a specific context, uh, want taal word binnen bepaalde context gebruik. Jy communikeer nie net vir niks nie. Jy wil bepaalde goeders bereik om te communikeer. So daar sal altyd context wees. Lastly, Context, en ek het dit nou al van tevore bykie verduidelik, is what makes the text not just written, but visual and audio too. En dis hoe kom ons dit so, uh, 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 so goed kan gebruik, of so, so daarna kan kyk in termen van ons eie onderrig uh, in die intermediaire fase. So keep that in mind. Ok, the next thing there, what does this look like in the intermediate phase? There are advantages, ok, uh, because the text affords the use of scaffolding. Die hele scaffolding, stuierwerk, uh, as jy terugdink aan bijvoorbeeld by Kotski oor hoe uh, kinders leer, with a lot of sca scaffolding from, from people who have a higher language um, development than um, the learner. Um, so we basically extend the learner's current skills and we build a bridge between their skills and our skills. They can cross over and uh, broaden their knowledge uh, and through this reciprocal teaching takes place because of the, re, uh, the reaction between learner and the educator. Okay, so dit is baie belangrik, omdat tekst so divers is, as ons daarmee kyk uh, na hermeneetische bril, um, bied het vir ons die kans om stuiwerk op te bou, uh, in termen van taal, en dit te leer vir die kinders, en die, die kinders gebruik dan ook die stuiwerk uh, om dit te leer. Okay, let's uh, break text down for the intermediate phase. Hierdie was nou alles net die theoretische Hoe kyk ons na hierdie ding? Wat sy bril sit ons op om na, om na hierdie ding te kyk, om na akademiese term te kyk? Ok, so, how do we break down text for the intermediate phase? Ok, I'd like you, before we carry on, to take out your um, study guide as well. Ek gaan daarna verwees op die skerm ook. Ek sal hem nou opbring. Ek wil net eers hierdie met julle deur gaan. Uh, and then we look at how it's broken down. Page specifically to page 12 and 13. Firstly, we think about factual texts. Factual text gives information, onthou hier is nou alles binnen in die intermediare fase. It gives information, instructions or persuades by giving facts and information. Ok, uh, denk aan goed of soos advertenties, denk aan inlichtingspamflette, denk selfs aan die Koran. Um, dit is alles factual text, daar is sekere goed as wat daar aankom. You can break it down even further into factual description text, factual recount text, procedure and procedural recount, explanation and persuasive text, um, which then in turn consists of exposition and discussion. Now let's have a look at what it looks like uh, in your study guide. Ek wil net een groter maak. If we look there, we've got how it's broken down, uh, specifically factual description, this is now factual text, where it describes a thing or a place, typical landscape uh, description, here is its features, if it's a recount, a recount beteken om terug te denk, om terug te onthou, en jy dan um, oor te vertel, as you can see the retails events, which have already happened, en daar is een bepaalde tyde achter, it could be a historical report, it could be a, a book uh, on history, it could be a, a film, uh, an adaptation of history, there are, there are its features, an information report, classifies, describes and gives factual information. So, daar is een bepaalde structuur daarachter. Dit gee een bepaalde informatie uh, daar hier. Uh, typical example would be a book on the facts of Wales or a documentary on the facts of Wales. Uh, a procedure, this is something we typically associate with um, recipes, instructions and manuals. It uh, gives instructions. There's a step-by-step -step, um, uh, guideline on how to do something. 
It begins with the statement, then the goal, and then it carries on until there is an, uh, an ending according to that. If we page over, um, we see there's also a procedural recount. So that is on terugte on how who eats work. Tells us how something was made, uh, what was done in time. Typisch, a project is the text a further above on this. Documentaries is another example. A science experiment is another example. We can see there with um, the statement that it makes. Secondly, uh, on that page, an explanation why something happened. Okay, uh, they give typical biology text there. A text there, the the life of a of a butterfly, how gears work. Uh, if you watch how it's made on TV, that's a typical uh, explanatory text. There are its um, uh, topics, uh, its description. Okay, persuasive text. Um, this has to specifically uh, refers to uh, exposition and discussion. I just want us to return to the PowerPoint quickly uh, and let us look at persuasive text uh, from there. Uh, this thing keeps on doing that. Okay. Uh, the exposition, it gives us reasons for a point of view to try and convince others of it. So it uh, is also specific text. Um, that is a typical opinion stuff in the Quran. Or there it is a forward text in your handbook, for example. If you say, here is what we read book on, this is how we can so Then there is also discussion, different points of view. Uh, and there is a bit of convincing involved in this type of uh, text as well. Let us have a look at the uh, the um, study guide. What it says about that gives reasons for a point of view. You can it all uh, and then a team's argument for a debate would be an example. Then discussion, different points of view. As I said earlier, uh, should cause be banned from the inner city is an example of that. So typically, um, um, reasons for and reasons against you uh, associate uh, in this text. Okay, let us move on. I just want to get my slides so. Going back again, okay. If we move on, literary text, and these are the texts that we mainly find, although I will um, uh, 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 actually take a data later, we mainly find these in the intermediate phase. Their main purpose is to entertain or to evoke or elicit some emotional response. By using language, not just language, there can be visuals as well. Remember, text as a communicative unit which works together to uh, create certain um, emotional reactions. Um, we can further break down these um, literary texts into literary description, literary recount, personal response, review, and narrative. Let's have a look at what they look like uh, in your uh, study guide. There's no in blood say an, door sin on Okay. Literary description, description of people, characters, places, events, and things in an imaginative way. Okay, by here in a in a denkbeeldige uh, manier, a roman of sorts. There's the example as well. Description of a character or setting within a story. Your literary recount, a terugblik, a literary terugblik. Um, events from a novel, plays. Okay, the gingerbread man, a gingerbread man is an example. It's humorous. Uh, it can be uh, interpreted in several ways. Then a personal response, um, a personal uh, uh, um, opinion on a novel, for example. This would be more in a review, like um, uh, more um, more le uh, more uh, based on opinion than on fact. Um, uh, and you'll see the examples there. It can even translate to artworks or poems. A review is very similar, although there must be some kind of neutrality. Okay, there will also be a short uh, analysis as you can see there um, and there's an assessment as well you see there's uh, the examples of commentary on a film a play or a book lastly and here we move even more to the intermediate phase uh, phase is narrative literary text types uh, it tells a story uh, of a series of events there's time there's place uh, the characters uh, problems that need to be addressed the examples they include picture books cartoons mystery Fantasy, adventure, science fiction, etc. Now, so that we further go, I'm going to give you a little bit of a caps to give you a bit of a caps to use. How do you use it? How do you use specific text to choose for your planning for your lesson uh, to do? And where do you need to look? The where do we go? Then further on, so that you will be able to follow the details. We go a little bit of a look at how you use the text to use. Okay.
Goed, ons gaan nou by hierdie stuk kom, ek wil eerst terug gaan na uh, die powerpoint toe, um, en daar gaan hy. So, om saam te vat, literary text en te tyne of te elicit an emotional response, uh, and they can broken, be broken down into those categories that we saw uh, on page 40. Now let's have a look at how this fits into the intermediate phase. Okay, learners, as I said earlier in the intermediate phase, deal mostly with literary text, although this is interspersed with factual text from time to time. Je mag kry dat leerders op deel van die curriculum sê, stel of hier weather reports on, doen dit bijvoorbeeld. Um, we can also uh, refer to these individual texts uh, as with the weather port, a report, which is more scientific, uh, in their specific uh, genres that whether either fall into the factual text or to the literary text. Factual text would typically be um, uh, outside the literary text and would be more based on facts, for example, lit uh, recipes, where literary text would be more based on fiction. That is very important. So as was now here, tabel kyk, en julle gaan ook sien, en gaan nou weer terug, so om te gaan om julle die voorbeelde te wees, kan ons intermediare fase tekstes soos volg opdeel. We firstly have your stories, this would include your essays, your short stories, your diary entries, your recounts, drama, specifically plays, but it could also be the performance of drama in itself. Poetry speaks for itself, this could be either nonsense poems, as they call it, net lekker reimpies amper al wat reim, wat mens lekker oor kan lach, or then more serious poetry as written by famous English poets. Information texts, this could be advertisements, this could be journalistic texts, although that perhaps fits more in with media texts, that kan, soos ek sê, weer texts on weather patterns, where the children have to watch the weather for five days, they have to report and things like that. Social text, this could be magazine text, this could be again uh, advertisements where the child is brought into uh, the reality of their own surroundings as well. We gaan later bieke kyk daarna na hoe ons hierdie tekste kies, wat is toepasselik en wat is nie toepasselik. And then lastly you have media text. Onthou asjeblief, dit is nie noodwendig met die korant of die tijdskrif artikel, dit kan ook een radioprogram wees of iets oor die radio, dit kan a jylle aantal goed wees. Keep that in mind. That is often what is required in terms of planning. Okay, let us just have a look at more examples there in the textbook. You'll see there they've included novels there with stories, plays and audiovisual texts with drama, so you can include film, television series, poetry is poems specifically, I mentioned more serious and less serious poems, information texts, advertisement posters, notices, uh, information text can include something like a death notice. Nie dat jy dit nou al op intermediare fase met die kinders gaan doen nie, maar ek weet bijvoorbeeld, mens het daarvan geleer om het trek as ek erg onthou. Social text would include invitations, emails, SMS's, letters, and then media text of course, newspapers, magazines, televisions, television and radio programs. Okay, let's move back to our PowerPoint. I believe we are very close to ending. I would just like uh, to discuss assessment activity one with you. Okay, assessment activity one asks you in, a, in an essay of 500 words, werk maar op so 500 woorde, um, to compare two texts from the intermediate phase. So, enige van hierdie tekste, en hulle voorbeelde, ek dink is drie, dit is nie net twee wat jy moet vergelijk, gaan vergelijk dit. Okay, nou studenten die belangrike ding wat ek hier ook probeer doen, is nie net om my te vertel wat het is nie, gaan vergelijk hulle features met mekaar. So my mens vir my sê, hierdie is stories, hierdie is drama en daar is power training. That, you'll get your minimum marks for that. If you want to do well, if you want to stand out, go and compare. So say, with stories you've got an introduction and there's a third person omniscient narrator, with drama that doesn't happen. Um, the, uh, there's only side notes, for example. Gaan doen op directe vergelijking. Moe nie net vir my sê, hier is dit, hier is dit, en dit is dit, en dan uh, verwag uh, om goeie uh, punte te kry. Ek gaan vir julle um, die volledige uh, assesteringspakket nou gaan oplaai op je klas, so dat uh, gaan assessment activity 1 wees, en dan al die assesterings wat uh, voor en toe ook kom. Ek gee dit vir jou, 
Um, moet nie probeer om vooruit te werken. Jij gaan um, tien tien net bykie droog maak, ek sê nie, jy kan het niet doen nie, maar uh, wees maar voorzichtig daarvoor. Oké, okay. uh, thank you very much for your time, ek hoop um, jylle is veilig, uh, en dat ons mekaar oor twee weke uh, weer sal sien. Onthou asjeblief, as daar enige fout is, as jy sikkel met iets, um, is jy baie welkom my, vir my e-post te stuur, ek help jou graag. Uh, dit is vir my belangrijk dat jy gemakkelijk voel binnen die module, dat jy gemakkelijk voel binnen jou studies, so uh, vraag gerust.